from his studios in New York. It's time for Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. Here's your host, Dan Tortora. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Proud to be here. You this third here. Wow. <laughs> Proud to be here. It's, it's, it's great to speak for a living when you can't. So proud to be here with you this morning on this Thursday. And for those of you on social media, please make sure to follow us on Twitter at CallDT, Instagram at WakeUpCall underscore DT, and of course on Facebook at WakeUpCallDT. Follow, 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 and be a part of the show 24-7. You're the first ones to get the information when we put up events. We have event pages on Facebook, and of course our links to our videos and our articles and these shows and the playbacks of these live shows are all on social media one click away. So all you have to do is make sure that you go to Facebook at Wake Up Call DT, Twitter at Call DT, and Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT, and follow and like our pages so that you can connect with us 24 7 and be the first to the information. So that's the fun of it all. So make sure that you do that this morning. Here in the second part of the first hour of the show. We'll talk Syracuse Orange men's and women's basketball. The women's team faced off against the Miami Hurricanes inside of the Carrier Dome yesterday, and the men's team will be doing the same thing tonight, facing off against the Miami Hurricanes. So a little interesting here, a little double header in a way, even though it's Wednesday, Thursday, the Syracuse women's team facing off against the Miami Hurricanes, followed by the men's team facing off against the Miami Hurricanes. So the women, I had the opportunity to uh, sit down with Coach Q and Adni Amadou, who is in charge of his international recruiting. Uh, we sat down and obviously had a good time and, and had a lot of fun inside of the press room pub on uh, 220 Herald Place in historic Herald Square in downtown Syracuse did a live show for you there. You can watch the videos on facebook.com backslash live now DT as well as facebook.com backslash wake up call DT. You can watch the videos with Coach Q and Adni Amadou. So we had a great conversation. We followed that conversation by continuing to speak with Coach Q in our typical uh, Wednesday segment that we had this week at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and you can set that and make sure that you tune in all throughout the rest of the Syracuse women's basketball season every Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, live here on Wake Up Call. Coach Q joins us on MixLR.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. That's Mix, L is in live, R is in radio, dot com backslash Wake Up Call DT. And in their game against Miami on Greek night, they lost... 84 to 71 ultimately uh, in this game here. The team has started off well. They started off 4 0 in the ACC. They lost on the road on a bad shooting night against Georgia Tech and became 4 1 and are now 4 2 in ACC play. So Syracuse trying to stop their skid as they will face off against Duke coming up here very soon. They started off in the game outscoring Miami in a close one in the first quarter, 25 to 22, and then had, had a very poor. Second quarter of the game, they're outscored 23-12, to tied Miami in the third quarter at 19 apiece, and then ultimately couldn't get back to it. So they've struggled out there in getting this thing uh, done and, and ultimately you know, uh, struggled to make their shots here. Miami did a, a heck of a job in this game and you know, ultimately were able to come away with the victory here. And uh, ultimately, they shot 49% from the field. But Miami started off against the Syracuse women's team shooting 56.6%. And that was a huge part. And also the fact that they were 5 for 7 from 3 in the first half, which was 71.4%. They finished 60% from 3 and 49% overall, as well as 86% from the line. As opposed to Syracuse's 36% shooting from the field, 15% shooting from 3. They did go 83% from the free throw line, but you know you look at 60% from deep as opposed to 15%. You know Miami took 15 threes, made nine of them. Syracuse took more than double the amount of threes and made less 
than half of what Miami made. So they doubled how many they took, made less than, uh, or made right around half. They were 5 of 32 from long range, 15.6%. So they double up and then some on the threes that they take as, as opposed to Miami, but couldn't get the shots to fall. And overall, they made 28 shots in the game. And uh, and ultimately, it wasn't you know it wasn't enough for this team to win. And the funny thing about this is that Miami made twenty five shots in the game, and Syracuse made twenty eight. But Syracuse still losing the game because of Miami's ability to hit those threes and obviously take care of business at the charity stripe, where they made twenty five free throws to Syracuse's ten free throws. Syracuse only went to the line twelve times. Miami went to the line 29 times and obviously toward the end of the game took care of business and did what they had to do. Miami's bench points 16, fast break 16. Syracuse uh, did pretty well on the fast break as well with 10, and their bench scored 39 points in this game. Syracuse's bench accounted for 39 of their 71 points in this game. So more than half of their points coming from their bench, which if Jim Beheim had that, I'm sure that would be a very happy day for Coach B. Syracuse women's basketball will try and get back to it, try and get back on it, try and get their shooting back on par as well here as they face off against Duke this Sunday, January 27th at 1 p.m. Eastern time in Durham, North Carolina, before they come back home on January 31st on Thursday at 7 p.m. to face off against Virginia inside of the Carrier Dome. So make sure you come out and see this Syracuse Orange women's basketball team play. Support your team. They are 6-0 and on neutral court. They just got their first loss against Miami. It was their first loss at home this season. Puts them at 6-1, and 15-4 and four overall, 4-2 four and two in conference play, as I said before, and 3-3 three and three on the road. So still a very strong season, and now it's just about bouncing back. You wanted this team to bounce back after Georgia Tech, and obviously it's taken a little bit of time here, so they're looking to bounce back after this Miami game. Two games skid, hoping not to be three as they go on the road to Duke this weekend, and you can obviously watch that online and pay attention to that and whatnot and if you're going to be down in the North Carolina area I highly suggest that you go out there and see the Syracuse Orange women's basketball team face off now on the other side of things on the men's side of things for Syracuse Orange men's basketball we look at where the Orange are currently sitting right now in the grand scheme of things they're just outside of the top 25 according to Jay Billis at uh, at 26 but the Syracuse Orange men's basketball team coming up tonight is facing off against the Miami Hurricanes. That game will be at 8 o'clock at the Carrier Dome. I will be on site. I hope that you will too. The game, Syracuse's record right now is 4-1 and one in conference play, very similar to the women's basketball team. They're 13-5 and five overall, and Syracuse just won their last two games. They defeated Pitt, and they won on the road at Duke they've won both or they've they've won th- two out of their three home games in the ACC defeating Clemson and Pittsburgh and falling to Georgia Tech they will have Miami as I was talking about tonight and the Miami Hurricanes current record at this time of conversation is 9 and 8 they are 11th in the ACC out of 15 schools with the record of 9-8, and eight, they are 1-4 and four in the ACC. They've lost to North Carolina, who's ranked in the top 15. They defeated Wake Forest. Both of those games were at home. And then they lost on the road to FSU, who's been up and down this season. And they lost at Louisville. They also lost at home against NC State, ranked in the top 20. So they have lost four of their last five, and all of those four losses come in the ACC as they get set to face off against Syracuse. They've yet to win a road game in ACC play, and obviously, uh, like I was saying, they've dropped four of five in their last five games, and those four that they dropped are all in conference play. So struggling in the conference are the Miami Hurricanes as they come in to the Carrier Dome tonight. And to take a look at their scores and where they're at right now, Chris Likes is leading the team with 18.1 points per game. And we look at the fact that Zach Johnson, and these these guys have all played 17 games. Zach Johnson, 13 points a game. Anthony Lawrence, the second, 12 a game. Ibuka, 
Izundu has 11.8 points per game, and then Vasilovic has 11.6 points per game. So we're looking at a, a, a team that is averaging, five players averaging, that have played all 17 games this season. Each of those five players are averaging at least double digits uh, per game here. Their top rebounder is Izundu with 9.4 game. He's averaging about a double-double. Anthony Lawrence, not too bad, with five rebounds a game himself. And as far as, you know, their best shooter that's out there, their best uh, three-point shooter maybe for taking the most would be Chris Likes at 37.5%, but Anthony Lawrence is at 37% as well. So you got two almost 40% three-point shooters, and then you have uh, you have – Vasilovich, who has a 44% from outside as well. And field goal percentage-wise, you know, Azundu is at 64.8, makes sense on the inside. And then Chris Likes at 46.1, Anthony Lawrence at 46.9. So you got some big-time shooters on this team. You have guys that have the ability to make threes. You have five different players that average double figures. So this is going to be a tough game for the Syracuse Orange. You can't let that record of 9-8 and eight fool you by any stretch of the imagination because the Miami Hurricanes have so much talent, and there's a lot of different guys that you're going to have to key in on and be ready for. Now, Syracuse was able to do that against Duke, but Duke was without Cam Reddish, and they were without you know, uh, Trey Jones. So you take two away, and obviously you got to look at Zion Williamson and R.J. Barrett and whatnot, and they were able to do what they had to do to get – the victory but with Miami and you know these guys coming in here Syracuse is going to have to key in on everybody everyone's going to have to play good defense everybody's going to have to help and shift and move and Syracuse is going to have to make their shots because Miami is that type of team you know historically under Jim Laranega that when they get comfortable when they start hitting those threes and they can hit them from pretty deep it's a watch out time because once they start to feel it once they start to get comfortable you're in a situation where you know this this could be a long night for the Syracuse Orange, even though you're playing up against a team who is nine and eight overall. You know, this is a team that, you know, hung with Florida State, lost by, you know, six points in that game. They hung with NC State and lost by five as well. So where they head from here, we shall see as they face off against the Orange, but this is no slouch, even though they're at the bottom of of the ACC. There's no reason whatsoever for anybody to think that this team is not going to give Syracuse the best game that they possibly can as they come into the Dome tonight for the game at 8 p.m. here on Thursday, January 24th. But before we get to that game, I had the opportunity to catch up with the coaching staff as well as the players coming off of their win over Pittsburgh. And I want to start with Buddy Bayheim and just what he can say. He played 19 minutes. 20 minutes is a half, so played almost half of the game most minutes that, you know, really, I mean, especially, I mean, an ACC play, but this is where we're seeing Coach Bayheim trust in his son, put him out there a little bit longer, had some faith that he could get the job done. He was hitting shots. He was four of five from three point range. So I asked Buddy about Coach Bayheim having trust in him and the coaching staff keeping him out there for almost half the game. And this is what he had to say. Uh, it just means a lot, um, not only coach, the coaching staff, but uh, the, my teammates tell me to get in and shoot the ball no matter what. If I'm open, shoot it, and it's just something that, that means a lot to me as a shooter. It's something you need. You need your teammates to believe in you, and you got to believe in yourself. So I just keep working, and, and getting used to the speed has helped me, and just make sure I knock my shots down when I get a chance. Say about the mentality of it all to keep shooting even when they're not falling. Uh, it's, it's what shooters do. you got to keep shooting no matter what. Um, and my teammates know that that I'm gonna miss shots, and, and they know how how capable I am of a shooter, knock down open looks, and, and they're gonna keep telling me to shoot it when I'm open, and that's what I'm here for, knock down shots. Team wins by 11. You have 13 in this, obviously a big part of this victory. Just what you can say about having that opportunity to be such a big element of this game? Um, it, it's definitely a great feeling, and something that you you just uh, that motivates you to keep keep getting better and, and keep working for these wins, and just something that we we want to keep doing, keep winning, and, and just. Uh, uh, make sure we can be in the best situation we can. So maybe it'll be a good ride home with uh, with Dad today. Uh, yeah, definitely. Might have to go home tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. Congratulations. Thanks. 
That coming once again from Buddy Bayheim of the Syracuse Orange men's basketball team going four of five from three-point range and having his single-game career high, which was 13 points in this game as he continues on through his true freshman season. Keeping with the players, O'Shea Brissett, I spoke with him on how anyone, any night, it can be their game, spreading the ball out as opposed to last season where it was on him, Tyus, and Frank to do it all. This is what he had to say about that. Uh, you know exactly that. Honestly, um, everyone on the team has you know a lot of confidence in himself, and we all trust each other uh, to get going. Um, you know, Elijah didn't have a great game today, but you know next game he's going to play you know as, as good as he ever has. So we know uh, you know basketball's ups and downs, different sides. So um, we just want to attack every game you know with the same mentality. Uh, you just try to play for each other, and you know, whoever's not it is, is how it goes. With last season being you, Frank, and Tyus, what's it been like for you to be in an environment now where sometimes it can be Elijah tonight, Buddy Bayheim is going to do what he does from beyond the arc. you got guys like Jalen Carey that have come in and made some plays and whatnot. Marek has had his moments. Just what it's like to be on this team not having to do it all. Uh, it's great. It's great. Um, you know, it takes a lot of pressure off off of the, uh, you know myself, Tyus, and uh, and Frank, uh, knowing that you know we don't have the same team as last year. We have you know an even better team, honestly. Um, and you know I wouldn't say it's just just the guards. I feel like Pascal is doing a great job now. You know, really picking it up. And you know, Brahma has his games, but we got to keep him consistent. Uh, so we just just a whole team effort. And you know, I'm happy that everyone's able to contribute and you know uh, play for each other. What have you seen out of Pascal? Because he was obviously taken out of the starting lineup he was sat by coach Bayheim and then he responded by having a double double against Duke almost had one in this game just what you've seen from him um you know he's he's a guy that you know never gives up doesn't matter what happens uh you know he's always trying to go he's always trying to you know stay with it and uh, that's what we need you know he's one of the key guys on the team he's an older guy he's been through it and uh you know he knows what uh, what to expect from coach and you know how the games are going to be so um you know he's he just you know stayed the course, stayed focused in practice, kept on working, and you know showing now in the games. To go a little bit deeper into Marac, just what you can say about how he's evolved as a player and just his ability to find guys in the open court as well. Uh, it's great. Uh, he's keeping his head up. He's staying confident with the ball, and that's what we need him to do. Uh, we want him to make those plays. Uh, you know, it only opens up for himself. You know, uh, you know teams are gonna you know realize now he's a great passer and you know change their defense and you know it's gonna help someone else on the team or it's gonna help him. So. Uh, you know, I'm happy that he's able to, you know, stay confident again with the ball in his hands and, you know, stay poised. Lastly, for me, just what you could say about I asked uh, Coach Autry about this between you, Elijah, and Tyus, who throws down the best so far this season? Uh, me. I have two bodies. <laughs> Don't talk to people, so I'll say me. You say you today yeah. with that foul that you had at the band? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for It'll sure. be you today. All yeah. right. Fair enough. Thanks, man. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. That coming once again from O'Shea Brissett of the Syracuse Orange men's basketball team. O'Shea Brissett this season, and as him and I were just speaking about, and you heard that there, he doesn't have to be the guy. He doesn't have to have it all on him. He is scoring 13.8 points per game, nevertheless, and has 7.8 rebounds, averaging almost a double-double, and he has played in all 18 games. He averages about 33 of the 40 minutes per, per game this season. His three-point shooting is down 28.9%. And uh, 38% from the field, almost a 70% free throw shooter on the season so far as O'Shea Brissett looks to get uh, continue to move this team forward and, and get this team in good footing here, but not having to do it all. We switch to the coaching staff here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on wakeupcalldt.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt to speak on the play of Marek Dolajai, a fellow forward. I know he's been playing center as well, but... You know, a, a true forward on this team to uh, O'Shea Brissett is Marek Dolajai, and I had the opportunity to speak with Alan Griffin about him. He's averaging about 20 minutes a game, he's played all 18 games, three points a game, three rebounds a game, almost two assists per game, a little over a steal per game, and keeping it under one turnover per game. He is making 58.5% of his shots and doing a, a heck of a job in the grand scheme of things here. So a lot of respect for Marek Dolajai and the work that he has done and his ability to find his teammates as a forward to be able to feed his teammates. He did it in the Pittsburgh game at the top of the key, sent the ball inside for a layup, and was able to you know find it. I mean, he, he, 
he plays this game, and again, it's you know it's the overseas game. Big men know how to shoot threes in the overseas. They could feed players, you know, overseas and whatnot. It's just a different game over there. And I feel like you could be seven foot tall and dribble better than somebody who's five foot six. So you know, the Marek Dolajai not only has has worked on his jump shot, worked on his scoring overall, worked on his ability offensively, but he's also finding ways to help out his teammates, grab rebounds, get scrappy, go after everything, be the utility belt, and he has a good eye and he has good timing to find his teammates out there at the basket and around the court. So this is what Alan Griffin had to say about the play of Marek Dolajai. Oh, one of one of our better playmakers on our team, uh, especially when teams are pressuring the way you know Pittsburgh uh, pressures, and Pittsburgh does a really good job of it. Um, I came in and, and, and you know and uh, was a pressure relief for us. Uh, had a couple of good passes against Duke. I mean that's just what he does. Pascal coming off of a double-double against Duke comes into this game, gets some points, gets some big-time free throws at the end of this one as well, and pulls down double-digit rebounds. Just what you can say about how he's coming along. Could have been a double-double. I, I got to get him back in the uh, in the lab shooting some free throws, but um, I'm just happy for him. He stuck with it. He played through some some adversity, he, and we got a long way to go. But you know, right now he's starting to hit his stride a little bit and uh, doing a phenomenal job for us on the boards. There's the negative emotion of coming off of a loss, and then there's the emotions of coming off a win and still making sure that you're locked into everything. Just what you can say about coming off of that emotional win over Duke and staying focused on this game. You know, uh, just our leadership at the top, obviously, Coach, uh, the last couple of days of practice have been really, you know, good and on our guys and making sure that we stay sharp. But also, too, you know, Tyus and, and Frank and those guys, you know, performing the way they perform. And, and, and practicing, you know, our practices have been re really good, and you know, we just got to keep that up. You know, it'll translate to games. Buddy Beheim goes four for four from deep, misses the last one, ends up four for five overall. All of his points coming from long range. Just what you could say about his single game career day? You know, it's not easy to come in and, 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 and make the threes that he made. Um, he's a really good shooter. We see it every day. If you ask anybody on this team or in this program, are they surprised? And they probably say no because that's what he do. You know, uh, so you know, it's just congratulations to him. But you know, he needs to make eight more, nine more, <laughs> ten more. You know. So we're going to save a little bit more for when, the next time that we're out doing our thing with the Alan Griffin Hour. Sound fair? Ah, uh, sounds fair. That coming once again from Alan Griffin of the Syracuse Orange men's basketball team, former player on the team, former graduate assistant, and current assistant coach on the staff. And coming up next here is Adrian Autry, fellow assistant coach and fellow former player on Syracuse's men's basketball team, speaking here with me about Marek Dolajai's vision on the floor and so much more. You know, we, we know, like we've talked about before, Dan, and you know, even last year, you know, Marek Dolajal has an unbelievable feel for the game of basketball. Uh, he's played, you know, in Europe, which is a little bit different with a lot of ball, a lot of ball, a lot more ball movement and things like that. But he's a talented passer. He's a talented player. Uh, I think this team is starting to realize how to utilize him and, and play off people's aggression. I just thought, you know, he was really, you know, he does, he was doing what Marek does. We see it a lot, and we see it pretty much every day in practice. When you, you speak on, you know, obviously the game in, in Europe and, and big men being able to do so many different things. When he faked the three on the outside and dribbled down and then waited and went on up and underneath the guy for the layup at the rim, just what you can say about his wherewithal because not just the assist but his ability to work the ball himself, his dribbling ability and his comfortability on the on the court is obviously there. Um, you know, I thought is again it kind of just speaks to you know his his basketball acumen, his basketball IQ, I think he, you know, seen an aggressive closeout. Yeah. He showed the ball fake and, you know, and got to the basket and made an unbelievable pass and made an unbelievable, you know, a good finish. But, you know, he's a smart player. I think, you know, uh, this team is, is starting to kind of come together a little bit, playing with each other and, and really understanding and the ball's moving and we're sharing it. So, you know, we're, we're excited as, you know, going forward. We feel like we're getting better. There were people that made phone calls to Marek, phone calls to the family. You went over there. You and I spoke before you went over there. Just what you can say about what you saw in him because he is that diamond in the rough that you were able to get on early and you left an impression that obviously brought him here. Well, you know, I think uh, with me being playing 
over in Europe a lot, uh, having to understand the European players. And, you know, he was the guy that when I played over there at the pros, they always had a young guy that they brought up to practice with the older guys. And he was that guy, you know, and those guys are typically pretty good. You know, when I first started in Germany, it was, you know, I'm not comparing him to Dirk Nowitzki, but, you know, it was Dirk Nowitzki that played on a Division II team that played up and things like that. So I understand that. But, uh, you know, the things that I've seen is what everybody's seeing now, a guy that, you know, with the ability to play, uh, winning basketball, make small plays, good passes, uh, has a great feel for it. Uh, all he cares about is winning. Um, that's important. And uh, he's not, you know, about his personal stats, but about the team and, and a guy that, you know, I thought would be able to, you know, people talk about his weight, people talk about his his weight and things like that, but he plays with a bunch of heart, and that's what I've seen when I've seen him. I've seen a guy that's going to fight you. He's skinny, but he's going to fight you every tooth and nail and give you everything he has. You talk about a team that's it's starting to come together. They're 4-1 and one in the ACC. The only loss is to Georgia Tech. You got that win over Duke as well. Just what you could say about what is happening on the team. What's the culture and the environment like right now? Because we're seeing success, but what are you seeing in those moments that are outside of the games? I think the team's getting better. I think uh, you're starting to see um, our diversity Diversity, multiple ball handlers. You know, I thought Tyus did a really good job today of, you know, not only scoring the ball but uh, getting us into things and sharing the basketball and making plays off the bounce. Which, you know, we didn't. He wasn't doing that before. He was just, you know, last year he was just scoring. Yeah. You know, he didn't. He didn't have a lot of assists. You know, I think you're starting to see O'Shea diversify his game. He's making some great passes and assists and rebounding and doing things like that. So I just think you're just starting to see this, this team really understand and, and play together and share with each other. It's just a different different team. I think these guys are starting to understand, you know, the pieces that we have. Who's throwing it down better, O'Shea, Elijah, or Tyus? It depends. It depends on, uh, you know, the takeoff, you know. If it's yeah. two feet or one feet, you know, it depends. But uh, both of those guys, all three of those guys are all athletic guys that can really get up. That coming once again from Adrian Autry, assistant coach of the Syracuse Orange men's basketball team. So from those gentlemen, I want to thank each and every single one of them, O'Shea Brissett, Buddy Bayheim, as well as Adrian Autry and Alan Griffin for being a part of the show. Coming off of the Pittsburgh win and moving forward into tonight to the Thursday, January 24th game at the Carrier Dome inside of ACC play against the Miami Hurricanes at 8 p.m. Eastern time. I will be on site on location. Hopefully you will be as well. You can follow me and my thoughts on the game as they happen by going to Twitter at CallDT. That's C-A-L-L-D-T. So make sure you check me out on there. And, of course, the story will be up on wakeupcalldt.com immediately following the game on the articles page. We changed the Right Now page name to Articles to make it even easier for everybody to get to. So over 500 articles are there. If you go to wakeupcalldt.com and click on the Articles tab, it'll bring you to our online newspaper, which will have a story from tonight's game as well as everything else that's already up there for you to check out. And it is by category. So if you just want Syracuse football, you can click on that tab, and it will only give you the Syracuse football articles. Very user-friendly and very easy to connect with. So make sure you do that today and become a member. Subscribe to the site so that you can hang out with Wake Up Call with Dan Satora 24-7. Thank you so much for all your support and much appreciation to each and every single one of you that's already been on the site.